Kelly here. If you're new to my channel, I am so glad you're here today. Today, I'm gonna to share five, no wait, six things that friends and family members can do to show a hard of hearing or deaf family member or friend that they care. So as I was getting ready for this video today, I did my hair and it's kind of this backwards braid and I absolutely loved it. I was thinking about doing kind of a hard of hearing deaf confidence video where I share hairstyles that show off hearing aids or cochlear implants. What do you think? Do you think that would be a good video, bad video? I want to hear in the comments below. My mission of this channel is to spread awareness for the deaf and hard of hearing to make the world a more friendly place. Especially with things like coronavirus, masks are more common and it's making it harder than ever for the deaf and hard of hearing, specifically lip readers, to communicate. So I hope that this channel will help people be more aware of how we communicate and how they can help us. So please take a chance to like this video, hit the thumbs up down below, and subscribe to my channel. I hope you stick around to the end of the video. I'm going to share how long my hearing aid batteries last. People always ask, how long do your hearing aid batteries last? And I thought I'd answer that. I wonder if my batteries last as long as other people? I don't really know. But typically, they have been pretty consistent in how long they last. I have noticed differences between brands, but I'll share that at the end. So here we go. We are going to get right to it. Here are six things that friends and family of the deaf and hard of hearing can do for their loved ones to show them they care. Number one, face us. If we cannot see your face, we cannot hear you. This is very applicable to when you take a family picture. If you can't see the cameraman, they can't see you and you won't be in the picture. With the deaf and hard of hearing, if we can't see your face, we cannot hear you. So this applies to a wide range of situations. One of the ones that I dealt with most commonly was teachers in an educational setting. They would often be talking and turn around to write on the chalkboard or the whiteboard and they would talk into the board and I would sit there even though I was in the front row and I still could not hear them. So if we cannot see your face, we cannot hear you. Another place that I really struggle with this is in the car. Like if we are driving somewhere and we have some friends in the back, I have to turn all the way around in my seat and look at them so that I am able to hear what they're saying. I really lip read, but it's one thing to hear, it's another thing to understand. So if we have the auditory information, that's great, but if we can pair that with visual information by seeing your face as you talk, that helps a lot. Number two, make sure we can see your lips. So this seems very similar to number one, but actually it's not. What I mean by make sure we can see your lips is a lot of people will face us, but they have things that obstruct the lip. For example, mustaches, a common culprit, and beards. Take them off. Another common culprit, especially today, is masks. No one can tell what anyone's saying. <laughs> No one can tell what anyone's saying because we can't see the lips. So a way to avoid this is wear a seeing easy mask. This is a mask with a clear window that enables the deaf and hard of hearing to see lips. I made a pattern on one of these. So if you wanna know how to make one of these, click the link. So there you go. There are some various ways that you can make sure that you show your lips. Okay, number three, have good lighting. This issue is most common, again, in cars. When driving at night, it is just, when you have the sound of the road and you have someone talking to you behind you and then you have to turn around and it's dark, it's just the worst combination. Or restaurants. Restaurants can be really difficult to hear it as well because the lighting is very dim and usually comes from down from the top. So again, we can't really see your face, we can't really see your lips, good lighting makes a difference. So one way that you can keep your deaf and hard of hearing loved ones in your mind is consider if you're going to go out to eat a restaurant that has seating that is well lit. Another poorly lit item, I guess, is a social setting. Things like that where it's just low light. Again, we can't see your face, we can't see your lips, we can't understand what you're saying. Number four, Keep us engaged in the conversation. Consider what you're saying and make sure that it's not so one-sided. 
Now, if you just got over a breakup with a friend or whatever it may be, and you just need to vent, then vent. But know that we love a conversation that keeps us engaged. We prefer small groups as well. Any group over three, at least for me, I tend to get lost. So I prefer small group settings. If you invite your friend to come out a lot and you notice they don't come and the group is over four people, the size of the group could be an issue. So take time to be with your friend or loved one and make sure that large groups can be an issue. So take turns to talk with them and engage them and ensure that they feel included in the conversation. Number five, bank on and make it a habit to repeat yourself. This means that when you're talking, you can say, I really like this ice cream flavor because it was soft and smooth. And this ice cream flavor was just the best I've ever eaten. Sometimes when we hear, we don't hear everything, but we hear bits and pieces. And our brain has to work hard to put it all together. So if you can restate yourself or say the same thing kind of two times in a row, it helps our brains catch up and it helps us understand what you're saying. It gives us an opportunity to be able to stay up to date on the conversation. Now, this also includes don't feel like you have to talk super slow or exaggerated. Just talk like normal, but just take it into account that we are trying to keep up with you. And if you restate what you're saying, that helps us get a chance to catch up. Number six, ask us. Don't be afraid to ask us, your deaf and hard of hearing friends and family members, whatever it may be, what you can do to help us. Everyone's different. Everyone has different preferences but the ones that I have shared are the top six ideas that I have. When people ask me, I can tell that they really care. And when they go to a conscious effort to go the extra mile to help me face me, show their lips, have good lighting, meet me in places where I feel like I can talk to people and interact with people, when they restate what they're saying and things like that, it really helps. And so there you go. Number six is ask us figure out what we prefer, and then follow through on them. Those little actions mean a lot to us because other people just don't get it. And they are not there the way that our friends and family can be there for us. So when you put these little steps into action, it is just extra sweet and we can feel the extra love and the care. I also want to add that if you go the extra mile to do one of these things, to show your face, to shave your mustache or show your lips, to choose a restaurant with good lighting or a setting with good lighting, to rephrase what you're saying or to engage us in the conversation, make sure you tell us that. Tell us that, hey, I picked that restaurant because I was thinking of you. I shaved my mustache because I was thinking of you. And I want to help you feel like you can communicate freely when you're around me. And let me tell you, that will mean the world to your deaf and or hard of hearing friend. So there you have it, five, oh wait, no, six things that you can do to show your deaf and hard of hearing friends and family members that you care about them. I hope that you've taken a chance to like and subscribe to my channel so that I can share more great information so that you can continue to be a blessing in lives for those around you and we can increase awareness for the deaf and hard of hearing for everyone. If you have any thoughts or comments, I wanna hear them down below, so be sure to leave them there. You stuck around to the end of this video and I wanna say, Thank you. So my hearing batteries, they last about a week, give or take. Usually it's a week. And I use the Rayovac brand. I find that works really well for me. Kirkland Signature, not so much. I wasn't super impressed with that longevity. Some would only last like four days, but a week, a week is good. So if you found a battery that works for you, awesome, way to go. Just know that there are various places that you can buy them. Amazon's always there, but I figure Amazon and stores are typically more expensive, so I recommend checking with your audiologist. I can get like a six month supply for about $30, which is incredible. Also, maybe consider a rechargeable hearing aid. I don't have rechargeable hearing aids. I'm kind of afraid that the charge would run out before the end of my day, so I've decided to stick with batteries. Another tip I wanna give you is make sure that if you have two hearing aids like I do, that you do not change the batteries at the same time because if you do, they will die at the same time. And I've been in many situations where both of my hearing aids die at the same time and it's horrible. Usually I can get by with just one. So 
there's another tip for you. I hope that helps. Again, please, if you haven't already, give this video a thumbs up. Please share it with everyone so that we can increase awareness for the deaf and hard of hearing. Hit the subscribe button down below so that you can see when I put out more awesome videos. Thanks so much for joining me today, everyone. I hope you have a great day. Bye.